did you learn about thermography? When I moved to Northampton, I heard little murmurings and rumors that this was something that women were using to check their breast health instead of mammography. And the way it was presented to me, it was like, you were like the cool girl if you knew about thermography. <laughs> so it was like trendy. It felt trendy, but it felt very progressive. Mm. And it was appealing to me right away because my experiences with mammography had always been mixed. I understood it, but it always felt so cold. I mean, not that I didn't always appreciate the technicians who were always super warm and helpful, but the machinery, the scale, the sounds in those rooms, it just felt a little bit alien. And I had gone through a couple of callbacks and I was slightly terrified by the whole thing. Yeah, so callbacks like meaning they're like, oh, we found something, it might be something, we wanna bring you back in. Exactly, yeah. So what is thermography and how does it work? So what thermography is, is infrared technology that visualizes and measures heat activity in the body. It's just a specially designed camera on a tripod that takes infrared pictures of the body. There's no squeezing and squishing, no cold glass, no pain. So it's actually incredibly simple. You walk into a room, there's a camera, a special camera on a tripod. You can wear a handkerchief scarf around your body if you want and you just have your picture taken of your torso from every direction. The thermographer is, is just there obtaining the images. I mean, you're in and out in 15 minutes. You know, recently I was at my annual physical exam when she asked why I hadn't had a mammography in so long. I said, I, I've heard that mammography is actually a leading cause in breast cancer. Like, I'm reading that in the New York Times. I'm reading that in really reputable websites and articles. For that reason, I haven't done it. What she said, without missing a beat, was, yes, we're aware that mammography is radiation, but that's why we only recommend it for women every other year. Interesting. <laughs> but you're still being exposed to radiation, and that still yeah. seems like a risk. Why, why would yeah. you want to do that if, you do, if you're not at risk? Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of like, oh, you're a woman, and therefore you have to go have a mammogram. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you have a family history, if you have real concerns, if certainly if you have a lump. But, but then again, I mean, if you have a lump, do you really want to radiate that lump? I mean, it's a really interesting dilemma yeah, for women. Definitely. I think we've been immersed in mammography for so long that we've just learned to trust it and not question it. I know that's how I used to be. Now, you couldn't get me in to have a mammogram. Well, actually, I shouldn't be so glib. If I was to find a lump, and then do whatever I could to address that. I could probably be convinced to have a mammogram because it's important in its ability to specify the precise location in the breast right. where the lump is. I mean, that's what mammography can do hands down. But in 2010, the New England Journal of Medicine published the first study in years that found that mammograms reduced cancer death rates by only 0.4 deaths per 1,000 women, an amount so small it might as well be zero. Another growing concern is that mammograms carry an unacceptably high rate of false positives, which can lead to repeat screenings, more radiation exposure. Dr. Chris Northrup says, the more mammograms you have, the more harm they do. If you have a mammogram every year for 10 years, she guarantees that you'll have a biopsy. It's just amazing how we live with these compromises. Like, and going back to mammography, it just seems like you're saying there should be a better option, and it doesn't seem like anything is being explored. Well, actually, the thing that women can do is they can demand an ultrasound. Mm. An ultrasound will look at the breast in a diagnostic manner and can show technically what a mammogram will show. And that's, I think, on the rise. Why do you think mammograms are so widespread? I mean, I think you were saying it's just sort of like it just became the thing and then people just kind of kept, kept doing it and <laughs> it's like we've kind of gotten stuck doing this one thing. See the reason? Yeah. One word. Money. Big profit center, mm -hmm. huge. You know, it's a profit-driven industry. The biopsies, the mammograms, the drugs alone are billion-dollar industries. And also, like, the mammogram specifically led to more invasive measures than maybe are necessary and sort of more impulsive decision-making about breast health and that sort of thing. Is that is that true, <laughs> would you say? Well, right. What I've read is that in 2013, there were 1.3 million breast biopsies that were completely unnecessary. 
And then there's the whole fibrous breast thing that's just gone off the rails. I mean, if you've got fibrous breasts, well, you know, stand back, cancer's on its way. Wow. It's crazy. You know, most of us have fibrousness in our breasts mm -hmm. and, and it cycles with our natural cycle. I mean, I met a woman at a wedding recently and she told me that she'd had a double mastectomy because her doctor told her that her fibrous breasts were precancerous. Wow. And actually that's not been found to be true. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's amazing, like considering how much activism there's been in like the past 20 years or so, that it's just sort of seemed to have like gone into these areas and expanded certain things, but like there's still so much that isn't known. It's crazy. <laughs> I think it gets back to this essential disempowerment that women learn, and especially with their breasts. Mm -hmm. Your mother has her regular mammograms, your friends do it, so you do it too. I mean, we are all, you know, susceptible to those currents, those really strong social, cultural currents.